So let's talk about Ramsey theory for one or two videos. Um, we're going to really focus on the most famous example of Ramsey, the Ramsey theory and then the one that's a little bit more obscure but that leads to Graham's number. Um, so here's a, uh, here's a question. This is one of the famous ways to phrase uh, this result. You At a party with six people um, and you notice that some people know each other, some people don't know each other, and you wonder uh, if there's like three people who all know each other, or if there's three people who are all complete strangers. And you can ask that number for any number of uh, people at the party total, and for any number of uh, people, the subset of those people. And an interesting thing, it, the reason I picked six and three, is that if you have six people, then it turns out there must be either three people who all mutually know each other, or three people who are all complete strangers to each other. Uh, and that's not an obvious fact. And it's not an obvious fact why it should be six. And in fact, it's not true if you only have five people. It's true if you have any more than six people. So here's how mathematicians usually phrase this kind of thing. Um, they talk about graph theory. Not in the sense of like the graph of a function. I mean, graph is a very general word from you know from Greek meaning just just writing basically um, and this is in the sense of a picture with nodes connected by edges so that's another mathematical use of the word graph it's one of the over many overused words in mathematics okay and so suppose I had, if I had five people I can denote those as the nodes in a graph or also called the vertices and then the edges can denote the possible connections between the two people. And sometimes you have directed graphs, which means you have like an arrow or maybe some sort of flow from one thing to another. But when you're talking about whether two people know each other, that's a mutual relationship. It's symmetrical. And so it's just you connect things um, or you don't based on whether they know each other. Or another way to say it is let's connect them in purple if they know each other. And I'm going to look use orange for possible relationships that don't actually, where they don't actually know each other. So there's a pair of people, and I'm going to draw a situation where um, these two people know each other, these two people know each other, but for example, these two people don't know each other. So the orange means strangers, and the purple means uh, they know each other. I'm not going to say they're friends. Maybe they know and don't dislike each other. Okay, so um, this is an example to show that if you have five people at a party, there's you can actually have a situation where there's no th trio of people who um, all know each other, and there's no trio of people who are all complete strangers. So like these two people, they know each other, but there's no way to complete that tri that into a triangle, a purple triangle of three people who all know each other. Similarly, there's no orange triangles. If you look at it carefully like that, uh, these two people don't know each other, but there's no other common, there's no other vertex that those lead to to make a triangle. So this kind of funky question, do three people know each other? It's, that's, is there a purple triangle? And do three people all not know each other? That's, is there an orange triangle? And so you can phrase it in a little bit more abstract way and more pictorial way. Um, you've got a graph and you, Look, you basically look at all the edges, all the possible edges in the graph. So this is called a complete graph. If you look at purple and, I know it doesn't look very purple, but it really is purple. Um, if you just want to say black or blue, you can, but it's purple. Um, it's called the complete graph. That's where, where you take some number of vertices and you connect everything, but it's uh, two colored. And if you want to be technical, it's an edge coloring. There's other rather different kinds of questions in graph theory you can do by coloring the vertices and asking for things like that. So two edge colored. It's really two edge colored. Okay. And the, the first case of a theorem in Ramsey theory is that if you have six people, then you must get this particular pattern. And so this is, I want to emphasize already, how similar this is to the sequence puzzle, even though it might seem sim might seem different. In the sequence puzzle, we looked at growing a sequence bigger and bigger and bigger, 
And the question was, can you always avoid a certain pattern? Um, and here, the claim is, if you grow the graph any bigger than this, any more than five people, any more than five vertices, then you cannot avoid a certain pattern, which is either a monochromatic orange triangle or a monochromatic purple triangle. So let me show you how that works. Okay, so I'm going to draw vertices of a hexagon. Okay, so I'm going to try and fail to draw a to draw a, a monochromatic. Um, well, I'm going to try to draw some things where you can, you don't have either a monochromatic purple triangle or a monochromatic orange triangle. So let's just focus on one vertex, for example. Okay. Now I'm supposed to connect it to everybody else uh, with either purple or orange. And so there's one, two, three, four, five connections, and I've only got two colors. So I'm going to have to use one of the colors three times, and without um, loss of generality, just by symmetry, basically, I might as well assume they're purple. And right now, there's no real loss of generality in actually drawing connections. The main thing, though, is that there's some color that you've got to use the same color to three different people. OK, so now, look, focus on the people you've just connected to, this, these vertices you've just connected to. OK? Um, if I use purple in this connection, or this connection, or this connection, then I've drawn a monochromatic triangle, drawn a purple triangle. So I cannot use purple here. I cannot use purple here. I cannot use purple here. Oh, great. OK, so I can avoid making a purple triangle. But what? look what I have to do. The only way to do that is to make an orange triangle. So I cannot avoid one of the two fates to have a purple triangle in the interpretation we had before, three people who all know each other, or an orange triangle, three people who don't know each other. And all that it required is that there were at least six vertices. And I was supposed to start connecting them all up. So um, this says that once the graph gets big enough, a certain pattern has to appear. No matter, um, you didn't have any intention of having this pattern, but that pattern has to appear. And that's the general idea of Ramsey theory, is that you have some family of objects. Like here, it's complete graphs, way to, ways to connect five things together, six things together, seven things together, eight things together. And um, the theorem is that as you look at those objects and they get bigger and bigger, you must find certain kinds of patterns. And this, uh, this is one of those famous patterns. So we could even start to make numbers. We could say uh, Ramsey of um, 3, 3, that means um, connecting three things together with purple or three things together with orange. So that's triangle, triangle. So we're looking for, um, we're trying to avoid a monochromatic purple triangle, three vertices, or a monochromatic orange triangle, three vertices. Um, or another way to say it is, how big do you have to get so that you're forced to have that kind of structure? Okay, we've, What we've proved here is that that's equal to six. So this is the minimum number of vertices or nodes, or in our interpretation, people, to guarantee um, either a purple triangle, and the triangle is why it's three, and I'll explain the, how to change that number in a minute, or a an orange triangle. And that's why that's a three. OK? So. Um, what, what does it mean to change those numbers? Because I want to think about, I want to give you some examples of where those numbers get a little bigger. Okay, So it's all about this idea of complete graphs. That is just taking a bunch of dots and connecting them all. So again, a complete graph on n vertices. It's a very simple notion. It's just what we were doing before, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 2, 3, or something like that. Oh, let me put that here. Sorry, let's not do that. You just connect all of them together, all of the possible ways. I don't know if I even want to draw all the possible ways. Um, I think I've got most of them anyway. OK. 
Um, and that's the universe in which we're living and trying to see w can we avoid certain patterns? Must we actually have some patterns even if we don't want them to, to happen? Um, and what we're going to do is instead of just looking for triangles, we're going to look for exactly this structure but smaller inside that structure. So, and we'll see that in a later example. So, for example, and here's what we'd call it. Um, so this is in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is called a K7, complete, I guess it's probably German, K for complete in German, uh, sev with seven vertices. And what we can do is we can ask, is there a monochromatic four click? And that's, you know, from the, the social term click. And that just means a K4 inside. Okay, so a K4 is just four vertices that they're all connected. So let me draw an orange on top of this purple. Maybe I shouldn't have connected them all. I'll draw an orange. I'll recolor some of these orange. And I'll take four of these vertices. And I'll connect them all together. And notice, you can kind of imagine it's a tetrahedron, because it's the same kind of topology as the vertices and edges of a tetrahedron. Okay, so here's, this would be a problem from the next stage of Ramsey theory. I have seven people together at a party, and I notice that these four people all mutually don't know each other, all mutual strangers to each other, because they, they have the orange. And they may, maybe everybody else um, knows each other, and that's why the purple. So, and that's why a click. So a click is sort of a bunch of people who all know each other. So this terminology actually comes exactly from this interpretation of graph theory about relationships between people. Okay, so um, what the number r, big R of little r s, is the smallest number. So it's a little more complicated. Smallest number of people to guarantee one of two things. And it, with this version of Ramsey theory, it's cl it's it's crucial that you have to be sort of trapped between finding people who do know each other and finding people who don't know each other. Because if you only go to one side, it's easy to just graph them, grow them, um, make them all purple. And if you don't care at all about whether they know each other, you're just trying to avoid people who are strangers, make sure you invite just invite people who know each other. And if you want them to all, all to be orange, invite a bunch of complete strangers. It's the fact that if you're trying to avoid both those situations, that you get trapped. That's the, uh, the, the key of the Ramsey theory here. Um, so it's the smallest number of people to guarantee either a purple R click, that is you're gonna guaranteed to either have R people at the party who all know each other mutually, or an orange S click. So you might either have you either guaranteed to have R people who know each other or S people who are all mutual strangers to each other. I'm only gonna give you a little bit more about R of little r, little s, and I'm only going to talk about the symmetric case, which is a little bit, I don't know, to me seems a little bit more intuitive, but you can make them different numbers, and it, it's interesting and, and very open, a lot of open research questions there. Okay, so um, it turns out the big, 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 big theorem that starts the whole thing is that r of rs is always finite. Okay, so no matter how, what r, uh, little r and little s are, as these get bigger, you're requiring a more and more fancy pattern. And you might think, well, it's easier to avoid a fancy pattern. Obviously, if you're going to require um, there to be either like seven people, you know, r of seven, seven, seven people who mutually know each other or seven people who are complete strangers, well, you can certainly, it's pretty clear that if you only have like six people at the party, <laughs> um, and it's also pretty clear if you only have like 12 people at the party, you're going to be able to avoid that. Um, so as little r and little s get bigger, um, this is going to get bigger, and it's going to be easier to avoid these more highly specified patterns. But no matter what these two numbers are, this is also always finite. And that's the big theorem that starts, starts it out. Um, in fact, you can prove at a kind of a, um, a pretty basic graph theory level I had a, an introductory, the only time I've taught combinatorics, actually. Um, I had my one introductory combinatorics student prove this. Um, and it's really not, not particularly hard. So what this says is that if I know 
r minus 1, r of r minus 1 s and r of r s minus 1, as long as I know that those are finite, and if I have some sort of bounds on how big they are, then big R of little r s actually can't be very big. It's only as most the sum of these two guys. It's kind of a little bit like of a sort of a Fibonacci thing, but it's really, really important that that's a less than or equal to. It's not an equals. Just knowing these two numbers does not tell you exactly what this guy is. It just gives you a bound on this thing. Okay. Um, so, as I've said, r of 3, 3, I gave you essentially complete proof that that's 6. That's kind of the only one that's easy, but, well, besides maybe like 1, 3, or something like that. Um, r of 4, 4, that's 18, and that's been known since at least 1979. Um, maybe a bit before that, but I think 1979 is accurate to really have that nailed down. Okay. Um, and that's that's already quite a bit more intricate to, to know than that than r of 3 3 is equal to 6 okay um, and so again this is uh, says that if you have 18 people at the party then you're guaranteed there will be either four people who all know each other or four people who are all complete strangers one of those things has to happen at an 18 person party no matter what kind of cool okay um, r 5 5 where you're asking about groups of five people who are either all mutual friends or all mutual strangers. That is not known precisely. Uh, it's somewhere between 43 and 49. And so you might think, okay, well, why don't people just nail that down? Um, why don't we actually just look at all the graphs and, and see what happens? Just write down all the, uh, or write down all the ways to color the graph. So you take so here's how you would do a brute force. You would do, I'm not saying brute force is the right way to do it, but it's always interesting to think about, well, why not brute force? We got computer, we got fast computers nowadays. Look at Moore's law, they're so fast, okay? So I would take like a K45, uh, for example, 45 dots, okay? And then I just have to color, I have to test all the different ways of two coloring it. In other words, I just color some of them purple, and of course, then the rest of them have to be orange. And then I see, okay, have I created something with um, a, f a purple five click or a uh, orange five click or not? Okay. Here's the trouble, though. If you do that brute force, a very simplistic strategy, then how many ways are there to two color a, a, a graph? Well, um, the number of edges total of a complete graph, uh, like with 45 vertices, is going to be 45, actually let me, let's just go the minimum, 43, that, that one I think I actually calculated, yeah, I'm going to look at 43 choose 2, right, I can pick 43 points to be the, the starting point of the, of the edge, 42 points to be the ending point, but then I've double counted it because I counted it with order, um, which I'm doing with my basic students right now, not that idea. Okay, so that's how many edges, and now I have to assign either of those one of two colors, purple or orange. So to everything in this number, uh, 43 choose 2, pretty decent sized number, I have to assign that a blue or an orange, or another with like a 0 or 1. In other words, I'm making a choice of two things this many times. Oh, suddenly that's a pretty big number, except by the standards of this series, of course. In any case, it's about, if you calculate it out, it's about 7 times 10 to the 271. More than a Google squared. Okay. Now that's not a big number by the standards of these videos, but it sure is a big number if you're saying, okay, I'm going to program the computer to just go through all those and test. Yes or no, have I created the pattern that I'm, I'm trying to avoid? So that's why people can't do brute force here. Unfortunately, even though people know a lot about graph theory and a lot about Ramsey theory, they haven't been able to nail it down beyond these bounds between 43 and 49. Okay, And uh, I think R66 is between, <coughs> just getting this from Wikipedia, not using any particular special knowledge. That's pretty wide bounds. And then here, 102, 2 to the 102 choose 2 is going to be quite a bit bigger. Just isn't got, not going to work um, using brute force. Okay, so that's the basic Ramsey theory story. Um, you can look at the Wikipedia article on Ramsey's theorem if you want more. And that's plenty of, plenty of time for this video. And then we'll talk about another Ramsey theory uh, situation in the next video and then go back to the sequences and some more Harvey Friedman stuff.